I was accidentally read into a Defence Department secret row that's going on about how to build anti-gravity flying saucers. I joke not. So ever since Jack Serfati visited this humble abode and talked about time manipulation, he's included me in his email list, often discussing advanced physics. It's fascinating. Thanks, Jack. But what you shared yesterday from the US Defence Department and an Austrian defence contractor reveals that anti-gravity works. Now, a big disclaimer, although what I'm going to share with you today is fascinating, it is all unclassified. There's obviously more to it than I know. Jack Zavati is really prepared to share stuff which pushes his theories forward and, in this case, exposes what's going on in the field of anti-gravity. So there's two immensely interesting takeaway points from what I'm going to reveal to you today. First of all, this row which actually reveals that work is well progressing in making a warp anti-gravity drive by defence contractors on both sides of the Atlantic. And two, for you, I've read their scientific paper, and I begin to understand what the row is about how to make an anti-gravity warp drive. I will try and explain to you today the physics of what their row is about and why it's earth shattering so for a start let me just read to you what seems on the surface just a bit of a scientific tiff but reveals an inner truth this is from jack safati hey email group i'm in london and i'm on my way back to san francisco jack was visiting contacts in europe including visiting me top man and he goes on to say this defense department report Unfortunately, the author is not disclosed publicly, but I think it's Hal Putoff, says that Bondi was wrong. Bondi? Defence Department? Oh. So this is a row which might just seem innocent, but it really isn't. Hal Putoff, we think, he doesn't actually sign his name, but I think Jack Safati knows it's Mr Putoff. I have to disagree with Bondi, and we'll have to understand what Bondi is. I think the gravitational field equation leads to a very different result. Bondi's report says it's very difficult to separate negative and positive masses. I really have to unpick that for you. It's fascinating. But we have shown, and the word shown is very interesting, very different results from this equation. Really? And this email confirms how this row happened. The author, probably Hal Putoff, met Professor Bondi, and I'll have to explain who Bondi is, on a flight from Graz, Austria. And Putoff pressed Bondi on the airplane to explain his results about anti-gravity. We got very different results. Really? How do you, Mr. Bondi, explain that your results does not include the field positive gravitational mass of matter and antimatter. All right. All right. Like, stop, everybody. You know, what am I talking about? What I am talking about is that it means that a group in Europe and a group in the Defense Department, probably Hal Putoff's company, who do advanced physics for DARPA and people, are building a practical warp drive using something exotic called negative matter. So what's negative so what's negative matter, Simon? Well, I didn't know. I mean I've heard of antimatter, so antimatter is just like the mirror image of normal matter, and antimatter and normal matter, if they ever join together, annihilate each other, producing bleh. And you can make a teacup of antimatter now if you have something called CERN or you work at Lawrence Livermore and probably lots of facilities around the world. Antimatter is real. Antimatter exists. And one of the most interesting things about antimatter is, does it have anti-gravity? Uh, we really have to unpick what gravity is. Gravity really isn't a force. Gravity is a side effect of the bending of space and time by mass. But gravity doesn't add up. It's got its basic arithmetic wrong. And here's the classic experiment that people have done hundreds of years ago. Here on Earth, we have what we call 1G. That's just Earth gravity. That's the weight of us, you know, bonk, boof. You know, we're being 
pulled or there is a motion of us towards the center of our planet because our planet has mass and of course our planet is orbiting our star the sun and that's all bending space and time and that's our normal reality we actually perceive space and time because of the gravitational mass field that we are in and it, interestingly our feet have a different attraction to the center of the earth to our head because we're tall there's actually a time difference between our feet and our head it's minuscule but very important but here's the big problem with the simple arithmetic of us and 1g here on earth so you've got the gravitational attraction or whatever that force is that pulls us down towards the center we're all kind of focused towards the center of our planet and also our planet is spinning, causing centrifugal force. You know, who's ever picked up a bucket of water and spun it around the head? My uncle, who ran a farm in Cheshire, used to collect eggs in the morning, put them in a pail, and then put them above his head, and then slowly bring them down and show them to me. And I was amazed as a six-year-old child how he did that. Now, of course, it's centrifugal force, which actually flies things off. And we're being thrown about the earth as it spins all the time and we're being pulled down. If you take those two forces, the centrifugal force of being thrown around our planet and our mass doesn't add up. We're much lighter than we should be. There's something actually repelling us from our own seat. Negative matter. Ooh. So here's a report on negative matter. It was originally classified, and it's obviously a Defense Department report. And it pretty well states that the universe must be, it's obviously a physics theory, it's how we understand our universe. The universe must be full of this exotic stuff called negative matter. What would negative matter be? Well, here's positive matter. Positive matter bends space and time. Just imagine a grid. Here's our planet, or the sun actually distorting space and time. That's true as far as we can understand it space and time are bent by giant masses eddington saw the light of a distant star distorted by the weight or mass of the sun space and time is bent so i mean it it's a very very good theory thank you mr einstein but at the heart of all galaxies at the heart of all massive objects there is apparently an exotic substance that's called negative matter not antimatter but negative matter that does this instead of making a well of gravity it makes a bubble of gravity convex rather than concave really but nobody's found it. It would be floating up there and I'd have to pull it down. It's mass, Ooh, it would keep on going. I'd have to pull it down to actually put it back on the, uh, on the table, have to hold it. It's negative matter. Now, Hal Putoff's team thinks that negative matter is bonded or hides behind normal matter. And so there's negative matter inside all normal matter. Um, okay, that's good. So what could you do with negative matter? Well, imagine you had a flying saucer. I don't like flying saucers. Okay, I'm cut, cut. Imagine you had a craft, a human craft, probably from our future, and you had in it a box of normal matter, a heavy thing, and a box of negative matter, ooh, light. And you, with your accelerator pedal, could let a bit out of each. You could go bonk and balance the gravitational force wherever you were hovering above, or you could add more negative matter and fly off, or more positive matter and descend. And you could also bend time, and space as you rode on a warp drive. If only you had negative matter. Well, where are you going to get negative matter from? The moon. What? Well, here's what this defense report says. Large masses such as our star or large planets, any large mass seems to accumulate this negative matter at its center. 
negative matter seems to fall into the very centre and gets trapped inside a large mass body and is contained in it. Well, it's probably in the centre of our Earth. That's why we are actually a bit lighter than we should be. Where are you going to mine negative matter? And they propose that it's actually a real solid, but it would affect time and space in a completely negative way, pushing it down. <laughs> this originally secret report says you can mine it in the center of the moon. And that's what they are proposing to do, to dig a tunnel right through the moon. And as they drill through the moon, when they get near the center, a proportion of what they bring up will be negative matter, which suddenly makes startling sense to me. You and I have grown up and have heard how our moon orbiting Earth will be the launch platform for humans to leave our solar system, where interstellar craft will be made. Well, with a negative matter mine, on the moon, bringing up a small but significant lumps of negative matter, shoving it in your Starlink deep space probe, you go zooming off. Now that's all just science fiction, Simon, isn't it? I mean, I'm just making it all up. Well, I'm not making it up. It's in this report, and here's the report. I'll put a link in the description. But what I'm saying today is there's a row going on between these Austrians who are working on it for a European defence project, and possibly, and it's not revealed, Jack's only saying this, Hal Putoff's company team, or whoever he's consulting for, who are working for it for DARPA and the US. That means negative matter exists. That means you can actually build a warp drive. That means that there's actual funding going on now to possibly mine for negative matter in the center of our moon. Well, that's just staggeringly, stunningly, amazingly, I, my mind is blown. So what do you think? Do you think I've accidentally been read in or stumbled upon this row between two international defense contractors who are obviously well on their way to actually making a warp drive using this exotic stuff called negative matter. Or am I just talking bollocks? Well, I normally do, but I mean, I think this is really interesting. Viewers, 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 what do you think? What do you know? What do you know about the physics of negative matter? What do you know about mining the moon? What do you think Bondi's group in Austria and Hal Putoff's group in the US are actually doing? Is this project really advanced? Comments, subscribe, thumbs up and like. You know the drill. The truth needs to be out there.